Hi, welcome to Elam Restoration Ministries Small Group. I welcome you today. It is November. Can you believe it? We got um, two more months before 2021 is in the history books. Um, I'm looking forward to 2022. I'm looking forward to more small groups and looking for a lot more in 2022 that uh, that is going to be better than 2021, right? So I think progressively each and every year things have gotten better. But I'm sure you guys have already answered your your um, your icebreaker question. So I'm going to answer it. Um, honestly, I think like the drop dead thing is like November 1st. Like, I don't know. I mean, I know you're supposed to have fall decorations for for Thanksgiving, but I don't know. I feel like I feel like you you need to have Christmas decorations on longer. Um, at least start it um, that way. Anyway, um, I wanted to get you guys started on our study today. I'm sure you guys have got some great answers. Uh, we recently had an issue at my own house because I started to throw away all the fall decorations, you know, cause we got like real pumpkins and stuff like that. And, and apparently that's not copacetic, but we had, we started to put up our Christmas tree. So I don't know, <laughs> pray for me. Amen. All right. Well, turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter four. Uh, we're going to start with verse four and it says rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be, me, be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This is one of my favorite um, compilation of scriptures. I just, I'm sure I've said this once before, but I really love the book of Philippians in the Bible. Um, it comes with a long storied history of how the whole entire church began and so forth and so on. But <clears throat> I want to make sure you know that just a little bit of a background that Paul wrote this while he is in Mamertine prison in Rome. Mamertine prison is, is, a, uh, is a dungeon prison that is directly in the sewer system of Rome. Um, there is a popular belief and study that, that Paul was actually in the actual sewers, chained, you know, with literally, you know, waist high of uh, human waste and, you know, uh, for the majority of the time that he was there. And then once a month, he was able to read letters and write letters and things like that. So that gave him the actual opportunity to be able to write these letters. But it is it takes a lot to be in that kind of situation and say, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And he put an exclamation point. And I think it's key because we need to know and understand that despite what we're going through, whatever it is that we are dealing with, that rejoicing is not actually a result of something that is happening, but yet it is actually a decision you make despite what's taking place. And in this particular situation, if you read prior to it, the whole entire church is on an uproar because of a certain divide between two people. They're having to deal with some sort of, 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 um, of, of uh, division in the church. And so Paul has given him an advice and saying, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. That is a decision to make. To, to rejoice. Then the next thing that he said was, let your gentleness be made known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Now, 
this right here seems out of place, but in, in taking it in context to where they were actually were and what situation they were dealing, he's literally saying, listen, rejoice in the Lord always. Have the attitude of rejoice. And it says, be gentle amongst each other. The Lord is at hand saying, listen, the Lord is near. He is right here. He is the proximity of where he's at in comparison to where you're at is within hand's reach. He's saying that, listen, you cannot act up <laughs> because acting up really makes kind of no sense to, towards the solution of what you're dealing with. And so he's saying, listen, be gentle. I know it's not easy to be gentle in the midst of conflict, but he's saying, be gentle about it. Rejoice and be gentle. I love the next thing that he says. And he says, be anxious for nothing. I love that because sometimes you can try to be rejoiceful and then at the same time be in a situation where you're where you're where you're doing, you know, a, you know, a, a, a certain measure of self-control, trying to be gentle with everybody, but seeing no results. And now anxiety sets in and saying that, listen, what, how much more do I need? To, how, how much more do I need to 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 put up with? And that's the mentality and the feeling that just comes naturally when you're in that kind of situation. But he says, be anxious for nothing. And this is the, the actual thing that he, he, he says to cure anxiety. And he says, but in everything, that means in everything you're dealing with, pray by prayer and supplication, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So in essence, he's saying that the attitude of rejoicing coupled with, 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 with making a decision to be gentle and not out of control, he says, and he says when, you, when, you, when you start to feel that you're anxious for things, he said, pray and, 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 and engage God, but be thankful for what you're praying for. Thankfulness is always a good antidote against anxiety. And it's just, we're just in that season of Thanksgiving right now. We have to find a way to be thankful in the midst of where we're at. And I love what he said this. He says, let your request be made known to God. I mean, he's, he says, listen, he, God already knows what you need, but go ahead and itemize that request. Father, I need this. I really want this, and I thank you for this. And I just wanna, I just love you because I know you have a plan. Be thankful in, 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 in that situation and anxiety will end up having to dissipate because thankfulness is the antidote for anxiety. And look what happens as an end result in verse seven and says, in the peace of God, whoo, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind through Christ Jesus. What he's saying is, is that that piece, it doesn't make sense because it, 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 it looks like you still don't have what you're, what you're looking for. And nothing really has changed for you. But because of the fact that you have made a choice to be thankful, to pray, and make sure that you have utilized your faith towards your solution, he says that piece that surpasses understanding, but it doesn't make sense understanding. Because you already know that in your heart, in your mind, you've given it to God. It says, the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind. Isn't that what anxiety deals with right now is your heart and your mind. It says, listen, if you are thankful in that situation, if you made a choice to rejoice and be gentle and pray and be thankful that whatever it is that you're asking God for, whatever that isn't happening yet, that peace, like as if it's already happened, will engulf your heart and your mind. Amen? So today I wanted you guys to, to have this, uh, this conversation regarding being thankful and being making sure that, listen, you know what, it might not be perfect, but I'm, I thank God for what is right. Amen? Amen. Well, enjoy your time of discussion. I do want to encourage you that we are having a get together here at church for all the small group members. 
whoever, if you've attended a small group once, you've attended a small group consistently, we're having some fellowship here at the church on Wednesday prior to Thanksgiving. We'll have games, we'll have a little bit of inspiration, and we're going to have, you know, definitely food and fellowship. It's going to be a great time, and I'm looking forward to seeing you there. I will be there. I'd love to be able to 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 meet you, or if I haven't yet, um, and, and just fellowship with you. So I invite you to come out. Amen. God bless you. I'm looking forward to seeing you on, on the next small group meeting at church on Wednesday prior to Thanksgiving. God bless you. I will see you then.